Yo guys, Jonathan here, and this is the brand new, just released 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro. Specifically, this is the lower tier entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro, which now features touch bar. And prior to this, you had to dish out a minimum of $1,800 to get touch bar on a MacBook, whereas this comes in at $1,299 and that's huge. It's also packed in a T2 chip, which is super underrated, a quad core processor, and more importantly, the MacBook lineup finally makes sense after they sadly killed off the 12 inch MacBook and put the non-retina MacBook Airs out of their misery. So when Apple finally updated the MacBook Air last year, I thought it made the baseline 13 inch MacBook Pro look a little silly. On paper, the MacBook Pro looked faster and everyone gave the MacBook Air so much crap for the lower clock CPU, it was low voltage, and in reality, performance between those two was nearly identical. Yes, the MacBook Air had a lower clock CPU, yes, it was lower voltage, but in reality, that was a newer 8th gen chip versus the 7th gen processor in that MacBook Pro that hadn't been updated since 2017. On top of that, because of the low voltage CPU and its baby charger, that equated to much better battery life, which I think is way more important for most people looking at a laptop at that price point. And the inclusion of T2 was bigger than most people give it credit for. So T2, awesome, touch bar, can be cool, it's not a game changer. But what I was most interested with this MacBook Pro was the processor. Specifically, this is a quad core chip with a really interesting 1.4 gigahertz base clock. And yes, Taryn, I know your water-cooled rig is super fast, but slam the brakes on those sweet Cherry MXs. This CPU, I promise you, might surprise you. And that measly 1.4 gigahertz base clock turbos up to 3.9 gigahertz. So I've said it before, I'm not the biggest fan of synthetic benchmarks. I usually like to dive in and see how it performs in real world tests, but at the very least, I like to start in Geekbench 4 because it'll give you an idea of what you could expect. And in this case, clearly that multi-core performance wipes the floor with the previous gen 13 inch MacBook Pro. But what was surprising is even with that measly 1.4 gigahertz base clock, it outperforms it in single core as well. It's also worth noting that as of now, this processor technically doesn't exist, or it didn't until this video. It's not an Intel site, but it's the i5-8257U, which is a quad-core chip. It does have hyper-threading, which surprised me because I figured at a price point of $1299, Apple was gonna cap it off, or at least limit performance in some way. Additionally, for one more point of reference, we also compared this MacBook Pro against a 2016 i7 15 inch MacBook Pro and the new 13 inch MacBook Pro outperformed it. Now jumping into real world performance, naturally got to open up Final Cut Pro 10. And what I did was take one of my older projects. It was a comparison of two of the newest 21.5 inch iMacs. And one of those honestly is hands down the best value for a Mac you can grab right now. So definitely check that video out. But in a nutshell, the project's over seven minutes long. It's ProRes HQ in 4K, the whole nine yards and this tiny, brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro with that measly 1.4 gigahertz chip dished out that H.264 file in three minutes and 16 seconds. That is bananas. And for reference, when you smack that side by side against the previous generation 13 inch MacBook Pro, that dished out that file in four minutes and 40 seconds, which is still impressive, but the performance jump on this MacBook Pro, the new one, especially when you factor in everything else you're getting is super impressive. From there, moving on to dumb ideas. I talk a lot of talk about that T2 chip. It's slept on and now I'm gonna put it through its paces and transcode all of the footage that you should have watched by now on this MacBook Pro into HEVC and then edit that in Final Cut Pro 10. So part two of dumb.jpg. What's going on here is I have all that footage again that you hopefully should have watched. See fast, I'm going to not only ingest but transcode with that HEV acceleration into this MacBook Pro directly through compressors. So let's see if this works. This is also gonna be a good little tutorial insight for those that maybe wanna transcode into HEVC to edit. If you have a T2 equipped MacBook, shout out to CKID, Terry Warfield, CJ knows tech. You guys pay attention. So I'm gonna add the file. I'm looking for that CFast card. And I believe this was around 200 gigs, give or take. I created a custom 
high bit rate HEVC file. So hopefully at the very least, this should one, cut my footage size in half, but we'll see. Got all that footage selected. I'm going to add that here. I'm going to select that custom HEVC profile. I'm going to set the destination. I'm gonna go documents into this MacBook Pro folder. I'll go ahead and call this footage create that and compressor is going to do its thing. It's going to generate each one of those files on the CFAST card. And in a second, I can kind of batch transcode everything directly off the CFAST card. So I'm not duplicating the media. I'm not transferring this first. I'm doing it directly off the card. So it looks like we're good. I'm going to hit start and see if this was a terrible idea. Initially so far, that looks like it's flying through this transcode. And again, that is thanks to the T2 chip. Now the real meat and potatoes test is going to be this last clip right here. That is 44 minutes long. In theory, that should decimate this machine. So while this is flying through that, I'm gonna throw up activity monitor and just check out those cores and showcase that the T2 chip should be doing that heavy lifting. So that is graphics. That's not gonna be doing nothing right now. And then all those cores, let's see if they're going to work or they're just kind of hanging back. So here it looks like they're actually putting in some work. They're not maxed out. They're not completely taxed, but they're working in tandem with that T2 chip and it is crushing this HEVC in code. It is worth noting that the HEVC acceleration is limited to 8-bit, not 10-bit, but it is still impressive nonetheless. So kind of checking in here, this first clip here that took 20 seconds to transcode from ProRes to HEVC, that's a 31 second clip. So it is doing this in faster than real time on what should be a slow machine. Kind of midpoint checking in here. It's also worth noting that this MacBook Pro does also feature the fourth generation butterfly keyboard. If it's going to fix the problems, it's still a little too early to tell. We'll have to wait and see, but it's nice that Apple didn't leave this one in the dark. So we're on the final boss level, this super long 40 minute talking head clip. This is the ultimate test. And if you did this on a machine without a T2 chip, it would be pretty ugly. So tons of credit here. Again, not only is it doing the touch bar, touch ID, hey Siri, you're getting secure enclave, which is huge. And if you use a Mac without that, you actually have to verify Apple Pay on a phone. Whereas with this, it's all done on that T2 chip. So we're done. And that entire transcode for all 200 gigs of footage took a total of 33 minutes. And again, mind you, that final clip, which was over 40 minutes, 4K ProRes, that was done essentially two times as fast as real time, which is crazy. Now, what I'm really curious is to see the file size of all that footage that we just transcoded, 200 gigabytes, and we're going to squash that down into 43 gigabytes. So for contrast on exactly how impressive that is, running the exact same task on the previous 2017 baseline 13 inch MacBook Pro, that took an hour and 27 minutes. So it shaved off nearly an entire hour. From there, this is maybe a little unorthodox, but I wanted to take that HEVC footage and see how it performed in Final Cut Pro 10. Now I had a theory with this that if I would transcode it to HEVC directly from the CFAST card and then edit that within Final Cut, that it would help take some of the load off of the CPU, off the integrated graphics. And if we play this timeline, which is actually full quality, it's unrendered, that's got a color grade on it, I can even go full screen if I want. That is handling it like a champ. And if we go back to activity monitor, what's interesting is the CPU usage is right around 77%, 67%. If you look at those cores, there's not a lot going on. So it'd be interesting to see is most of that work being done with the integrated graphics or is that T2 chip helping not only acceleration for transcoding, but editing HEVC as well. So this could be a pretty interesting workflow. Speaking of that workflow, and again, this isn't necessarily an orthodox way of doing things, going from ProRes to HEVC and then going back to H.264, but the entire project, excluding this voiceover, was just under 10 minutes long, and the export was six minutes and 45 seconds, so faster than real time. And that showcases, again, don't necessarily judge specs just by looking at them on paper. This is a pretty impressive little machine. So that is the surprisingly impressive entry-level 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, 
Make sure you guys drop a like down below and definitely subscribe. Turn on notifications, not only for more coverage on this comparisons, but to see what I'm gonna do with this giant PC behind me. See you on the flip side, PC boys.